Max news for the month of April 2023. Last month, we had the new Series Max 2024, and during April, a lot of companies started porting plugins to this new version. Shang Soeun in a stack is posting all the plugins that now are compatible with 3ds Max 2024. So far, we have V-Ray, Typeflow, Forest Pack, Film Effects, Thinking Particles, all Sivas plugins at this time, Polydesign, Kinematic Lab, and Marius plugins, and recently Deadline offered as well Max 2024 support. You can check this list from Shang Soe to see what's new. Right now, some of the most used plugins are already ported to Max 2024. And we covered a lot of the new features in Max 2024 last month. Some of them are not so visible, like they expose all the parameters from creating Pliblast to Max Script. Previously, some of these parameters were not exposed. Shang Soeun created a new mid preview for 3ds Max, taking as a base what already exists, but adding a lot of requested features by users. From Shang Soeun script, I personally love the use current viewport that is the that is a default right now, and you will get exactly what you see on viewport, but it has a lot of other interesting tools. The output path text box is now editable, you can directly type and edit in this text box. It supports for tokens, you can also use any global variable or global function. For example, if you want to add the frames per second in the name of the file, you can use frame rate and it will use whatever frame rate you are using in your 3ds Max file. So yeah, it's pretty useful, it's, it's basically what we had in Max, but with way more options. Eugene is sharing a collaborative copy-paste tool. It allows to share 3ds Max objects across multiple computers sharing a network, or also you can do copy-paste in your same machine to transfer certain 3ds Max objects across different 3ds Max scenes. You can pay for this uh, script, whatever you want, and the tool is available in Gumroad. Joker Martini released a script to create jigsaw puzzles. It supports Max 2018 or newer, and you can define as many pieces you want for row and column. You can mix and match different types of shapes to define your puzzle, and it costs $5. D95 Design created Autolight. It's a tool for quickly add and place lights in your scene with a lot of automatic tools. It can speed a lot your workflow, placing interior lights, creating any type of lights over existing objects or over face selections, for example. You can select the faces that you want from your object and it will automatically create a light on each of these faces, aligning accordingly to the normals. You will need Max 2016 or newer, and works for V-Ray and Corona Lights. It costs $18. Cosmo Library, the library from Chaos, has been updated with more than 350 new models, coming from the popular Evermotion library and also from EQ3 and 53 Humans collections. Um, this library is getting better and better, a lot of options and new models that you can see here. And for all my Patreons, during April, I share five different tutorials. On the first one, I cover different ways to keep the motion of objects after fracturing it with Typeflow. I cover as well the distance shader that is new in Arnold 7.2, how to use it in 3ds Max with different OSL shaders. In one tutorial, I cover all 27 Typeflow modifiers. I create more than 35 examples showcasing practical uses of each modifier and it's all condensed in one single video. Another tutorial I showcase Razor script that is free right now, we covered it last month and it's cool to cut all types of stuff and I showcase how I am using this uh, script to cut very high res geometry and how to use it together with Typeflow to create very nice looking distractions. Finally, we saw as well the new Typeflow Alembic export options, I showcase the improvements that we had, and how to load exports from Typeflow into Houdini, filtering by ID. On my YouTube community tab, I had a lot of fun running different polls this month, so you will see that if you are following me on YouTube community, you can uh, vote for any of that. We asked for the favorite new tool from 3ds Max 2024 and has been the Boolean modifier with 48% of the votes, followed very closely by the material editor. Most of the artists that follow me use 3ds Max alone, and 24% of you are using Blender on the side together with 3ds Max. 
I ran a poll with a favorite 3ds Max logo with over 1,300 votes and the most loved one has been the previous logo the second one is the actual logo that we have right now and I am a little disappointed I thought that more people will like the classical snakes for me it's my favorite but that's democracy I guess <laughs> and the actual poll is about what renderer are you using so far 50% of the people use V-Ray uh, I am a little limited with the number of options that I can add on these polls. You can add whatever you want in the comments. I can see that a lot of you are using FStorm, for example. It's cool and interesting to see. Our favorite section, 3ds Max, is only for RGB. Another great mod to showcase that 3ds Max is used for so many things other than RGB. We start with the studio Make. They started a YouTube channel called Make Originals with a new animated series called Match Explorers. It's free to watch and we have the first episode available with new episodes coming uh, every week or every two weeks, I think. And it's great and top quality as usual from this studio, everything that they did, great. All done in 3ds Max. And around the flow is sharing a lot of information about the making of in the stack. How they animate the characters all using 3ds Max, how they scatter objects with a tool done by Tyson Nivelle, done before Typeflow exists, and other cool information. So you can check, the links are on my description video. Check the stack link because it's a lot of interesting information. And as you can see, top notch quality work as usual. Jaime Diaz Alvarez shared a procedural shader and for a spec tool to automatically create a biodome. The results are very cool to look at, as you can see, uh, automatically it's placing uh, forest packed objects, and I guess that it's using a tree planner with V-Ray to create uh, this nice looking geometry uh, really fast. Very cool. Yan Ru is a freelance environment and lighting artist and create this impressive NPR Japanese style 3D scene. It's done in 3ds Max, it's using a Sketchfab assets and rendered in Unreal Engine 5 using the new Lumen and the Night tools. That, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Still is a work in progress, but looking very good and you can download it as well and test it for, for yourself. On the making of, we can see how Yan used Max for different modeling tasks and using the retopology tools. Mohamed Gadimi took a very boring dishwasher and transformed it into a robot with a very cool animation and cool render. He shared this in a stack group in Facebook. Pete Magnali created a very good looking plastic and paper grabs with great textures. He did the retopology and grab and cloth simulations in 3ds Max. And Christian Devney did an incredible short film by himself, sharing his passion for a space exploration. The film is called a Starship. And yeah, one more time, it's done only by Christian Devney alone. It's a tribute to his children, and I think it's astonishing work with an awesome cinematography, uh, awesome lighting. He used 3ds Max, Typeflow, Phoenix FX, and V-Ray for rendering. Remember, you have the links for all these videos on the description. Give some support to Christian with a like because it's more than deserved. This shot made me remember the work from Alex Roman with his third and the seventh short film. With these awesome cinematographic shots and great illumination, it's an awesome work from Christian, uh, really great. And from a space back to Earth with a reel with multiple effects from Andy Byrne. He did over 400 shots during 6 months for a low budget show called Legacies. 90% of all the show's CG has been done by himself, all done in 3ds Max, no pipeline, only 3ds Max 2020, Phoenix, Typeflow and Vexus. On a stack he's saying that, yeah, 3ds Max is simply doing the job. And it's a great tool to do all types of tasks, no matter what people will say. The challenge Rick B finished in April, and we have the winners. In texturing, Benjamin, with his work called What If, 
He did the pose and render in 3ds Max and the texturing in Substance Painter. Very cool stuff. We have Cal in the animation category with an awesome entry called Fall, animated in Maya, rendered in Unreal. And yeah, I think it's very, very cool. And John Fanny win the FX category with his robot breaking a wall, all done in Houdini. I think everyone here did an awesome job, a lot of cool stuff. Remember that the rookies, it's only by artists that they don't have ex professional experience. So it's all people that are learning or trying to enter into the industry. And if you want to jump into the next challenge, Ham3D is having a new 3D art challenge called Sci-Fi Industrial Zone. It's quite open. Just design and render a sci-fi industrial zone that is creative, looks cool and tells a story. You have over a month and there are a lot of sponsors and awesome prizes for the three first places, including each one one year subscription to 3ds Max, subscriptions to V-Ray, Substance Painter and a lot of other plugins. A pretty cool challenge. And remember that during this month we are having FMX at Stuttgart, Germany. An Autodesk Vision series is having place during April 26th and 27th with a lot of interesting talks by different studios and artists. Alex Horst is covering new workflows using Array and OpenVDB booleans in 3ds Max. Take it a look because these talks are always interesting. And that's all for the month of April. I hope that you like the 3ds Max news show as every month. Uh, remember to share it with your friends, give a like, give a comment, subscribe if you're not subscribed and thanks a lot to all my Patreons. I am trying to make one video at least a week exclusively for my Patreons covering Typhlow, 3ds Max and other tutorials. Thanks a lot of people supporting me there and yeah guys, see you soon. Bye!